How's it going everybody? Rybrand here today and I am back with an episode for you guys. Just want to give you some tips. This has really helped me and with the new scouting. I know it's like halfway through, over halfway through the game's life cycle, but uh, shout out to my roommate Grant who actually came up with this scouting system guys. It works great. It works great for us. He drafted four franchise goalies in one draft and was able to identify them completely and got them all. It's not like he really took guesses on any of them. Uh, but I just want to share it with you guys because I think it is a great way to scout and it will really help you in your franchise mode. So as you guys can see here, I'm in uh, just a Sabres rebuild I'm doing myself. We're at the date that I'm supposed to scout. So what you guys want to do first is at the beginning of the year, just assign the scout. Only assign them for potential and comparison. Don't do anything else. Do it for about a month, six weeks. If you're going to start it on October 1st, you can go to middle of November or something like that. Uh, and then what you guys want to do <clears throat> is after you've gone through the first scouting cycle, go into the view draft class. Then what you want to do, find the players that you know their potential at four bars. Four bar scouting accuracy. Um, and then write down the central scouting uh, rank. So as you guys can see here, I would write in a note. Uh, on your, I would do it on your phone or you could even do it uh, on a computer or something, but something that can be easily changed, a piece of paper if you guys uh, really want to. But these numbers will be changing because these players will be moving up and down in the draft class rankings throughout the year. So write down the numbers of the players that you know. So Lafreniere, so here I would write down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I would not write down 9 or 10 because I don't know them. Uh, 11, 12, uh, 14, and so on. So you guys can see when I know them completely, I write down their number and that tells me that I don't need to scout them from here on out. Now, once you've gone through that, I usually go anywhere between 250 to 300 uh, as far as the scouting ranking, just write those guys down. When you go to a signed scout, if you have the number written down, so we'll just go ahead here, uh, St. Dennis here, um, you know, we had one, five, but we didn't have 10. So we would go ahead and do potential in comparison there and then go through, say anybody that we didn't know. Uh, I would go right up to the draft here cause I'm close to the draft, which is June 23rd. So I would just throw a uh, wall on there as well. Put all those guys down for potential in comparison, press the start button and you're good to go. Now I'm not going to do that cause I haven't written this down yet. Uh, but that's how you would know who you guys should be scouting. And what that'll do is you won't overlap on who you've already potential scouted. Uh, and you'll be able to uncover the potentials of so many players. Because guys, potentials are really the only thing you're looking for in drafts. Uh, it doesn't matter what they're, you know, what else can we scout here? Uh, I believe uh, character assessment's one of them. Do you, who cares about their character assessment? You don't care about their playing style. Strength and weaknesses, skills assessment, character assessment. The only thing that you guys are really going to care about is potential in comparison. Because potential is the one thing that gets you trade value and the thing that makes your team better. As your players grow, that's really all you're going to care about. Like I said, playing style could be nice. You can know if they're offensive defenseman, defensive defenseman. But you probably will uncover that too. It just kind of comes uh, because not every scout lines up exactly with the day. But you want to write down that day that you would stop at. So for me, it'd be the draft, obviously. But say, like I stopped on May 17th here because that was the day uh, I had to reassign all my scouts. So you can see some of them are going on their own thing here. He's all the way through October 10th. I would not set that. I would go up until the draft um, so that when you can get uh, your new draft class in there, uh, you would scout those players. So like I said, guys, what you want to do... Once that's done, you would go into view draft class. You know, you've simmed the date or you've played until the date where you're supposed to check this out. Write down the central scouting numbers uh, in a list and then uh, check your list versus what your scouts are scouting. So like I said, I wouldn't scout one or five there, but I, uh, I would scout 10 because we don't know him completely. I know our scout says he's 13th, but that doesn't matter. Really, guys, the thing you want to focus on here is have is they have four bars of accuracy on their potential because that's what you want to uh, care about. So let's see, what have I uncovered so far? Uh, this guy's medium franchise, pick 117. I found him out. Um... Let's see, we got 56, we got a medium elite, we got another, uh, with a ton of goaltenders apparently. Uh, but you know, you just draft these guys, their trade value is going to be through the roof. You can trade these guys for, I don't know, maybe picks in the future. You know, if I don't think I want to use this Jason Cooper, I can keep him, see which one grows. Uh, you know, if I need a goaltender in the future, but we know we identified that medium franchise. We found two medium elites later in the draft. So these aren't the guys at the top that you probably are going to know already, but these are the guys that, you know you'll be taking second, third, fourth round picks with, uh, and you're just maximizing the value of those picks. This is the best way to scout so you guys can know 
who to draft and what to target in the draft. So if we keep scrolling through it here, you know, we found some low elites, a, bun a bunch of low elites so far, uh, some medium top sixes throughout the draft, you know, 40th here, 36. So these are guys, you know, starting to get into the second round that are still good enough to be drafted and, might, and have a good amount of trade value. We're close on suing in here. Uh, low top six, medium top four defensemen uh, here and there, you know, 41, 38. So, you know, like I'm saying, this is not going to matter too much when you're going, if we just sort by central scouting rank here, it's not going to matter much. Uh, Lafreniere, Kabanov, Asplund, Shore, Lawrence. These are the guys, the top five picks, you know, maybe... Uh, you know, you don't take Lawrence because he's high top six. That's I'm actually interesting to see high top six and then some medium elites in the draft here. But, you know, these two guys are the guys you don't know. So those are the guys that you, those numbers you wouldn't have on your list. You would have nine and ten uh, not on your list. So when you go into a signed scout and you don't see, uh, you know, so we'll go, like I said, back here. We didn't see ten on the list. If we're just doing it quickly, another example, ten here. You don't have him on your list of numbers, so you would be able to scout him. I think we had 43 or 46. Um, let's see. Do we have these guys fully? No, we don't have him. We don't have him. Okay, so anybody who we have their full potential, like the top two guys, the rest of the guys, you want to go ahead and scout those guys. Um, so you only want to scout players where you know their 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 the potential they, where you don't know their potential like I should, was saying Lafreniere here as you can see we got uh, potential high elite and we've got four bars on that guy as well but three O Roche Rochette I don't know how to say his name but that doesn't matter I would scout him all the way down through you know whoever I, maybe I do know I do know Ryan Francis so I would not scout him that would save me an extra slot uh, until the next time window of scouting but you guys do want to do this once a month or once every six weeks because. You want to wait until the central scouting ranks change because then you'll be able to know uh, and take it off and put back on numbers that maybe you know. But guys, if you have questions, if I didn't explain this well enough, I hope I did, let me know. I will answer all comments down in the in the comment section. I will help you guys out with this because I want you guys to be able to draft four franchise goalies. My roommate got four franchise goalies using this technique, and I thought it was about time you guys uh, you know, should get this scouting guide because this is how you guys want to do it. Write down the numbers of players you have their full um, full potential uh, scouted from the draft class. Then when you go into a signed scout, go ahead, skip those guys that you know them fully, and only do potential in comparison. And then, guys, if you run out of players uh, in a certain region, go ahead and move that scout to a different region where he's good. Write that down so you remember for the next season. And, guys... Thank you for watching. I hope this helps. Let me know if it does. If it doesn't, I can explain something better. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section. Leave a like if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one.